Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. What a life you've never seen. Today's show, ladies and gentlemen, God inspired is from drug, sex, and rock and roll to the fourth Reich, right under your eyes, and you thought you were dancing for freedom. You thought that if you did it in the road and smoked pot day and night, why it would lead to freedom, didn't you? But it's led to the fourth Reich, where baby body parts of slaughtered innocent babies are sold for profit by the Nazis of our time in Planned Parenthood. Right under your eyes, in Obama's America, baby body parts of slaughtered innocent babies are being bartered for profit. You heard me. This show is not about abortion. This show is about selling baby body parts for profit. Margaret Sanger was the godmother of Hitler and Planned Parenthood. Many of you think that Planned Parenthood is a benign organization. Do you know how much money they get from Obama's government? A half a billion dollars a year. Approximately a half a billion dollars a year is given by the Fourth Reich to the neo-Nazis of our time. Now, they don't have skinheads. They don't have swastikas on their scalpels. But make no mistake about it. Planned Parenthood is the descendant of the Fourth Reich. It actually is the descendant of the Third Reich, which was sort of a descendant of Margaret Sanger, who created Planned Parenthood, the Nazi model. But the Nazis also sold body parts. Did you know that? Much like the nice boys and girls who work for Planned Parenthood and drink Chardonnay and eat fancy meals in brick-lined restaurants while bartering for parts and jokingly saying they want to buy a Lamborghini, you're going to hear all of this. You're going to hear all of this. You're not going to believe it. An undercover reporter spent a lot of time going into a Planned Parenthood meeting and pretending that they were a biotech company wanting to buy body parts, baby body parts. Now, they should be given a Pulitzer Prize for this journalism, but as you well know, the slime in the media will not even report on this story. The slime in the media that works with the Fourth Reich will not even post the videos, but that's where we in talk radio come in. That's where uh, the organizations that post these uh, videos come in, and the, the people who did it should be given every prize in the world. It was on Breitbart this morning, and then it was on Drudge, and it's on michaelsavage.com, and you're gonna hear it played on the Savage Nation. New, un in case you don't know what I'm talking about, second video shows Planned Parenthood doctor haggling over the price of baby body parts. A new undercover video shows a planned parenthood official and a top one at that. Another fine lady who has the face, by the way, if you look at her face carefully, I watched it and I was chilled by her face. She reminded me of the Nazi women in the concentration camps. And you look at the woman to her right, actually, to the left of the screen. She looks like one of the oven stuffers that Hitler hired to push people into the ovens. Right in front of your eyes, they're discussing less crunchy techniques to get whole specimens and haggling over the price of fetus tissue sales because she wants a Lamborghini. The video was released this morning, the second part put out by the Center for Medical Progress. It features a woman identified as Dr. Mary Gatter. Mary, I don't know who your parents were. Mary, I don't know who you are, but I know this, Mary. If we had a legitimate government, you'd be arrested today for homicide you would be tried for homicide and probably five other crimes, such as trading in human organs, which is illegal, by the way. She is or was president of the Planned Parenthood Medical Directors Council until 2014, and now she works in a leadership and advisory capacity. 
and over drinks, Dr. Gatter and the undercover activists discuss, quote, specimen prices. They eventually haggle and settle at $100 for intact tissue. You're going to hear Gatter. You're going to hear her saying, I want a Lamborghini. I want a Lamborghini. And I think that we should begin with that soundbite, Robert, on the Savage Nation, how we've gone. Remember the, the focus of the show. The focus of the show is not to be lost, how we've gone from drug, sex, and rock and roll to the Fourth Reich. Listen. What, what, would, uh, what would you expect for intact um, tissue? What, what sort of compensation? What sort of... Well, why don't you start by telling me what you used to pay? Okay. I don't think so. I, I'd like to, I would like to know what would make you happy? What would work for you? Well, you know, in negotiations, a person who throws out the figure first is at a loss, right? So. <laughs> you, no, I, I don't look at it that way. I know. You want to play that game? I get I it. But I no, no. Wanna, no, I want... I ball because I'm used to low things from... You know what? Um, uh, if you low ball, I'll, I'll act pleasantly surprised and you'll know it's a low ball. Okay. What I want to know is... Uh, what would what would work for you? Don't lowball it. Okay. Tell me what you really. Oh, that's way too low. Okay. I, I, and that's I, really that's way too low. I don't. Now I want to keep 50, you happy. I've, I've been in places that did fifty too, but and we don't want to be in the position of being accused of selling tissue and stuff like that. On the other hand, there are costs associated with the use of space exactly. and all that kind of stuff. So what yes. would you think about? Right. So <laughs> way higher than that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd like to start at around 100. Okay. Now this is for tissue that you actually take, not just the tissue that the person follows you that you can't find anything. Right? Exactly. Right. What, what is what we can use, what is intact. So that's why I'm saying no, don't low ball. I, I want you to be well, it's happy. It's complicated and by the fact that our volume is so low too. I mean, can, are you looking at eight and nine week specimens or only second trimester specimens? It's been years since I've talked about compensation, so let me just figure out what others are getting and if this is in the ballpark and that's fine. If it's low, still low, then we can talk about it. I want a Lamborghini. <laughs> I said I want a Lamborghini. So she wants a Lamborghini and she's willing to sell baby body parts, uh, innocent little uh, babies, full human beings, by the way. Ask any neurosurgeon who's looked at them. And it's against federal law, but of course there is no federal law in the Fourth Reich that applies to Planned Parenthood. Federal law is only used against Tea Party members, returning military veterans, and those who actually love America. That's what federal law has become under the Al Sharpton administration. And Al Sharpton is actually the de facto president of the United States of America. It came out minutes ago that this street rat, this street rat Al Sharpton has been in and out of the White House at least 100 times. A street rat has been in and out of the White House a hundred times. He's really the de facto president of the United States. If anyone visits the White House over a hundred times to talk to the president, you have to assume the president and he agree on policies and principles. It was Al Sharpton, after all, the street rat, who lobbied strongly for the appointment of our Attorney General, Loretta Lynch. That's right. It just shows you that crime does pay in America. It's the opposite of what I grew up with, where I was taught crime does not pay. And we found out the opposite is true in Obama's Fourth Reich. Now, it's against federal law to sell fetal body parts. If we had a legitimate federal government, Planned Parenthood would be immediately indicted to leadership. They'd be taken out in handcuffs and arrested, booked and indicted, and then face a trial. They would say they maintain that they, they only donate the specimens and they only charge for the expenses it incurs. That's the front way. You get it? In other words, they sell the body parts, but they say they're not selling the body parts. They say they donate the body parts, and the only charge for the expenses occurs. And Dr. Gatter, Mengele's descendant, says, quote, we don't want to be in a position of being accused of selling tissue and stuff like that, Dr. Gatter says in this video. On the other hand, there are costs associated with the use of our space and all that kind of stuff, says Dr. Gatter, feminist. Now let's go back to the Fourth Reich analogy, which is why I played that song and intermixed it with the Nazi marching song, the Horst Vessel song. My attempt was to have you understand 
the sorry state that we're in under the Fourth Reich of Obama. Did the Fourth Reich, the one we're in rather, does it copy the Third Reich in any way? Well, let's look at what Planned Parenthood is doing now, and let's look back upon the German evil of World War II. Such diabolical practices were perpetrated by German World War II Nazis upon all of their prisoner victims. Adults were not only slaughtered upon arriving at concentration camps, but they were enslaved and forced to perform uh, death, death labor. And they were worked to death, starved to death, murdered, tortured. Then when they died, their bodies and body parts, such as hair and fat, were harvested by the Germans. The teeth were yanked out to extract the gold. Some prisoner skin was said to have been utilized to make lampshades. The Nazi model was never let any part of a victim go to waste. Planned Parenthood is not too far from that. Their motto may as well be never let go to waste. And of course, Planned Parenthood is the brainchild of the godmother, the godmother uh, Margaret Sanger. She embraced the idea of overpopulation. She believed that only certain human beings deserve to live and to have babies. And I'm going to read to you who she said should be killed. Did you know that? Margaret Sanger, the godmother of Planned Parenthood, believed that certain individuals did not deserve to live. She hated the poor. She hated blacks. Did you know that? All of you good black people out there who don't know which side anyone is on because you feel everyone's against you think very carefully about what I'm about to teach you on this show because when you hear some of the quotes by Planned Parenthood's godmother Margaret Sanger about black people and then you realize that your president gives tens of millions of dollars a year to Planned Parenthood and does not prosecute these individuals you'll have a lot to think about here is one of the quotes before I take my first break. Seven shocking quotes from Margaret Sanger, a famed eugenicist who birthed America's largest abortion on demand corporation from liveactionnews.org. One, quote, we don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. Do you understand how serious this topic is? Do you know that if, if, if Planned Parenthood is not stopped, in your lifetime, they will be exterminating the handicapped children who are born. In your lifetime, they will probably exterminate Down syndrome children. You have no idea that everything begins small. It begins very small. The Nazis began with one law. Do you know what that law was? The first law in Germany. I studied this in great detail. You want to hear what the first little law was? You know, great oaks from little acorns grow. You know that one. You heard that adage when you were a child, right? Great oaks from little acorns grow. Well, Hitler had a little acorn, and his first acorn against the Jews was this. Jews not permitted to swim in Aryan swimming pools. Jews said, eh, heck with them. Who wants to swim at them anyway? You know how that ended, don't you? If you think Planned Parenthood is in the health and education business, just remember the adage, great oaks from little acorns do really grow. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Here's the killer. Here's the killer. Rock and roll is amazing. The people are so darn talented, but their message is so warped that it will lead to the sale of baby body parts and people are indifferent. So, meanwhile, Al Sharpton sneaks in and out of the White House. Meanwhile, Obama puts down Christianity and lifts up Islam. Meanwhile, there are murder after murder by Muslims and Obama does nothing to stop the slaughter. Meanwhile, he does a deal with Iran bypassing Congress. Keep playing the rock and roll, though. That's the important thing. Just keep on playing the rock and roll. Keep it dumb so Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and all of the other good Catholics by youth can do nothing to save America. Why do I single out Robert De Niro and, and the other guy? Because they're such great actors and such strong men. They could do such good for America if only they weren't such egomaniacs who lived only for themselves. I mean, I put myself on the line every day. What do you think, I do this because I want to make enemies? 
Do you think I enjoy making enemies? Do you think I enjoy antagonizing the giant that hates the population that stands up to it? Do you think I like being the man who sticks my thumb in the eye of such powerful monsters? I don't. I don't enjoy it at all. But I feel we're fighting for our survival. And I feel that more of us exist than they know. And I feel that they fear us, desperately fear us, which is why the Fourth Reich is getting more desperate every day. 20 Obama quotes about Islam contrasted with 20 Obama quotes about Christianity. And oh, by the way, before you turn that dial, this morning Congress lowered their flags at half-mast in honor of the four military personnel slaughtered by that Muslim piece of garbage last week. But Obama would not order the White House flag lowered to half-mast until there was such an uproar that even Barry from Honolulu had to say, all right, lower the flag for those crackers. That's right. The same man who lit the White House for the gay night, the same man who lit up the White House for gay night, wouldn't lower the flag. But he had Al Sharpton in the White House a hundred times. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Turn your sovereignty over to the UN. Turn your babies over to the death machine. New songs in the Savage Nation, always changing. Throw out that fetus, throw it in the garbage can. Well, actually, you can donate it. Think of the money they can made. You can buy a Lamborghini with the parts. Then earlier I played, the, the, that song is amazing. I didn't know who Rihannon was. Rihannon, the witch. Well, uh, Rihannon is a witch. And the Welsh witch, Rihannon. The Welsh witch in the woods, Rihannon. How did these, these rock and rollers are pretty great. I mean, let's face it, that's why they were so successful because they were so incredibly smart and so incredibly creative. Let's be honest, we love them, still love them. But remember what I'm saying to you. Why do you think religious people fear? What I'm about to say to you is true. Why do you think they fear television? They won't have them in their houses. Do you know that? You know that religious people will not have televisions in their houses? Most of them won't have radios in their houses. Some of them have my uh, bought radios for my show. Do you know that? They won't go to the movies. Why? Do you think that they're stupid and throwbacks? Well, they understand what it does to their children. There's a story this morning that, you know, I'm going to give you one example of, uh, I'm going to get off the track for a minute because I, I tend to wander. The seven quotes by Planned Parenthood are now up on michaelsavage.com. And she began the eugenics movement. She felt that blacks, minority groups, the diseased and disabled uh, should be killed at birth. They should be terminated. I'm not making it up. If I made it up, I'd be out of business. Margaret Sanger, quote, we don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. In a letter to Dr. Clarence Gamble in December 19th, 1939, Margaret Sanger, the mother of Planned Parenthood, exposited her vision for the, quote, Negro Project, a freshly launched collaboration between the American Birth Control League and Sanger's Birth Control Clinical Research Bureau. The letter echoes the eugenic ideology still visible within the corporate vein of Planned Parenthood today. This comes from Live Action News. I'm going to just read it. She wrote, It seems to me from my experience that while the colored Negroes have great respect for white doctors, they can get closer to their own members and more or less lay their cards on the table, which means their ignorant superstitions and doubts. We should hire three or four colored ministers, preferably with social service backgrounds and with engaging personalities. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. It's very interesting, Robert, when you consider that <coughs> Reverend Sharpton goes in and out of the White House. Now, he's a reverend like my dog is a reverend. What do you mean he's a reverend? Well, why do they call him Reverend Sharpton? How does he get that name? Anyway, she goes on and says, we don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population, and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members, close quote. Then she says, I accepted an invitation to talk to the women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan. I'm going to read, you want to read this? No, I don't have to do it. You can read it for yourself. Now, this is not directly related, but... Yesterday, something was said that is so shocking and so important that must be listened to. Wesley Clark is a former retired top general. Remember him? Former Democratic presidential candidate. Last week, rather, on Friday, he called for World War II-style internment camps, 
to be revived for disloyal Americans. He did not say Muslim terrorists, by the way. In an interview on the despicable network owned by Microsoft's Bill Gates and NBC, in the wake of the mass shooting in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where you see, they keep saying Chattanooga, Tennessee now. The word Chattanooga now covers up the word Muslim terrorism, Islamic terrorism, Islamism. Now the word is Chattanooga. The vermin in the media found a new word. No longer are their service members dead. They've annihilated them. They're not even killed. It's Chattanooga now that suffered. Chattanooga was hurt. Not Marines and not a naval man. No, it was Chattanooga that was injured, according to the wonderful people in the media. But Clark said that, well, you want to hear it? He called for a revival of internment camps. He didn't say to help combat Muslim extremism. If he did, I might agree with him. But he didn't. Listen to his speech. It's very important. And it's somewhat related. Somewhat related. Somewhat related. Related somewhat to what I've been doing for you on the show about the sale of baby body parts. Listen to Wesley Clark. We are at war with um, uh, this group of terrorists. They do have an ideology. In World War II, if uh, someone supported Nazi Germany at the expense of the United States, well, we didn't say that was freedom of speech. Uh, we, we put them in a, in a camp. We, they were prisoners of war. So uh, if these people are radicalized and they don't support the United States and they're disloyal to the United States as a matter of principle, fine, that's their right. It's our right and our obligation to segregate them from the normal community for the duration of the conflict. And I think we're going to have to increasingly get tough on this, not only in the United States, but our allied nations like Britain and Germany and France are going to have to look at their domestic law procedures. Well, if he was talking about interning people who are preaching jihad, I don't care whether they are Muslim or not. If they're preaching jihad, they could be a Catholic. They should be interned. It's that simple. If you've got, and by the way, you have many imams doing this right in front of your nose in this country. Make no mistake about it. Go and look at the news that's being hidden right now. Do you think this is limited to the, quote, lone wolves? Every time there's another terrorist incident missed by Jay Johnson of Department of Homeland Security, Another one was missed in Chattanooga. The shattered Chattanooga. The residents of Chattanooga. By Mr. Abdubazabazabazabazad. The Muslim extremist who committed jihad on our soil. Missed because DHS will not ever, ever, ever acknowledge its Islamic ideology that is behind this extremism. They come up with every excuse known to mankind to hide that. And you're never going to win this war against Islamic extremists unless you identify them as such and understand what their ideology is that's the first rule of war is know thy enemy now the only question is about wesley clark who was he talking about when he said we must inter those disloyal to america that's see that's a little the little caveat i have well we could if it's barry from honolulu would be all tea party members he might inter all the conservatives in america into camps you say they're disloyal to his to his america his vision for america so be very careful with this uh willingness to absolve yourself of civil liberties to defeat the enemy that would work if we had patriots running america but since we do not have patriots running america i wouldn't give them one green peas more power i wouldn't give them the amount of liquid in a green pea more power than they already have over us we the people but i thought i should play the wesley clark piece it's an interesting discussion yeah so where do you want to go now? I need more music to get back to, to where I was. I want to go back where I was. McCain's fellow POWs trashed Trump, saying we protected his ability to be a billionaire. Now, this is an important soundbite. By the way, I still support Trump. I'll vote for Trump. I like Donald Trump. I think McCain is a lout. But McCain is a hero. I said that yesterday. And so he made a little error, big deal. A lot of people make little errors. Obama's made big errors. Has anyone called him on the carpet for it? No, but they won't stop going after Trump for one reason. He's the leader right now of the entire conservative movement in America, maybe the world. He's the leader of the Western world. You know that? You know that Donald Trump has moved up to being the leader of the whole Western world right now with his love for America, love for borders, language, culture, family. Uh, military. He's the only one articulating those views. You understand that? But nevertheless, he has set off a little uh, shockwave here by, you know, saying things about McCain that 
people took uh, umbrage with. I like the word umbrage. Uh, Kerry says Iran and their vow to defy the U.S. is very disturbing. Right after he gave him the keys to the nuclear bomb, this jerk, Mr. Ketchup, Iran comes out and says that we're going to knock America off, knock Israel off, death to America, death to Israel. And even after this deal, our policy toward the arrogant U.S. will not change, according to Khamenei, whatever that one is, Ayatollah Khamenei. Well, Ayatollah, what does Ayatollah mean? In, in the, I want to translate it properly. Because by this definition, we could have an Ayatollah running America for all I know. Doesn't Ayatollah sort of mean supreme leader? Or top uh, guy? What does Ayatollah actually mean? Somebody ought to do a rock and roll song called Ayatollah. I, I don't know exactly know the translation. I'll have to look it up. It's not in the uh, Keats etymology of the English language because it's not an English word. Ayatollah. Oh, it's like Ricola. It's like those guys with the big horn in the Swiss Alps for the cough drop. Remember Ricola? Ricola. No, that's not the same as Ayatollah. Look, I'm trying to have a good time here. You want to hear Kerry? You want to have fun with that one? We could play Kerry. What's the good of that? What does it mean, Robert? I'm going to look it up later during the break. Here's 20 quotes by Barry Obama about Islam. Number one, the future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. Close quote. Two, the sweetest sound I know is the Muslim call to prayer. You think I'm making it up? They're all quotes. Three, we will convey our deep appreciation for the Islamic faith which has done so much over the centuries to shape the world, including in my own country, close quote. Four, as a student of history, I also know civilization's debt to Islam. Five, Islam has a proud tradition of tolerance. Ah, uh, really? Even in Chattanooga? Six, Islam has always been part of America. How's that? How, how is that possible? You mean George Washington secretly had a prayer rug? You mean Jefferson prayed to Mecca six times a day? I didn't know that Hamilton uh, had a fez. I can, I can read more of it. This is from Michael Snyder on CD Clothesline. 20 Obama quotes about Islam contrasted with 20 Obama quotes about Christianity. Here's one about Christianity from your Christian president. One, quote, whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. Two, we do not consider ourselves a Christian nation. Uh, you want more? You would like more about Obama's uh, quotes from his books and his speeches? Because we have them here. I realize it's impolite. I realize it's somewhat offensive. But I said before, as I say again, that unless we shock you, you're not going to hear us at all. So we got to shock you, wake you up. After all, those of us in talk radio, even those of us with PhDs and master's degrees and authors of many books, we're nothing but shock jocks. I mean, the people you should believe are the guys who are like that guy, William or Wilson, whatever his name was. I always forget his name. Who was that one? The pancake guy they fired? Brian Williams. Brian Williams, that's right. Now, that's a reliable source. Or Dan Rather, or the one who gave the troop movements away on television, that one with the, the mustache on uh, ABC. Who's the mustache who gave away the troop movements and then went down to Cuba to uh, look for uh, Al Capone's vault? I think he has a name. I forget his name. Now, they're reliable sources. Another reliable source for you would be Planned Parenthood. I guess they're in the health business. Another reliable source about the word of Jesus would be Al Sharpton because he's a reverend. And if you don't trust Al Sharpton's views of Jesus, then you can turn to the other great reverend, Jesse J Jackson. He knows an awful lot about the teachings of Jesus, especially about being a money changer in the back of the temple. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, what else do we have for you? I need more rock and rollers. What I need right now. Who wouldn't agree with that? <laughs> I would say Hate is a Battlefield would be my song. Shut it off. This is the problem I have. I have to really read the lyrics to even understand a word of it. Even though I grew up in the age of rock and roll, I mean, other than the 50s, I could understand the lyrics. I didn't need a translation. I didn't have to go to AZ lyrics. Now I have to go to AZ lyrics to even know what the heck they were talking about. In the old days, you could hear it. You know, I love her, I love her, I love her, I love her. She's on a pedestal. I'm nothing. She's great. That's all the rock and roll songs. Well, she left me, she left me, she left me, and I'm a dog. That was the, the music of the 50s. I understood that. I'm no good, I'm no good, I'm no good, and she's great. That, that was the rock and roll that I grew up with. 
That's all. Now, now it's I don't know what they're talking about. I have to go to AZ lyrics. But when you read the lyrics, they're pretty amazing if you're on mescaline and glue. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. After the hour, you're listening to the one and only Savage Nation. You know, there are millions of people who love me. I don't care about the 17 people on Twitter who make believe they're 17 million. 17 people on Twitter are the people who have boycotted this show for 21 years and cost me millions and millions of dollars a year. Do you know that? Invented audience outrage at me, Rush, and others. Did you know that? 17 people control this entire uh, industry. Now I'm going to turn to Ayatollah Al Sharpton. He is now an expert on global warming. So far as I know, he didn't go very high up in school. I certainly know he doesn't have a degree in anything to do with anything. If you're wait till you hear this, you're not going to believe how desperate they are. Here is Al Sharpton, Ayatollah Sharpton on global warming. Listen to 15. For me and many of the champions that you will see today, it is an issue of justice and it is an issue of human rights. African Americans are at a higher risk of being uh, close or predisposed to areas of, of carbon uh, as well as this? other poisonous pollution in the air. What a and schmuck. And we have a disproportionate interest because we suffer disproportionately. You must have carbon in your brain, you putts. Carbon is a poison, you moron? I can't believe it. Ayatollah Sharpton on global warming? Can you believe the country would have sunk this low that the president would have this rat in the White House a hundred times? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400- Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. to make sure women have access to quality, affordable health care. And as long as we've got to fight to protect a woman's right to make her own choices about her own health, I want you to know that you've also got a president who's going to be right there with you, fighting every step of the way. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. God bless you. God bless you, America. You've come a long way, baby. Just light up a big, long cigarette. That was the 60s. Remember that campaign? That was the campaign of uh, Madison Avenue, Mad Men. You've come a long way, baby, so now you can light up a cigarette and give yourself lung cancer. Then you heard, it's our bodies, our cells, so you want to throw a, a fetus into a dumpster in the middle of a, of, of a club scene? Go ahead, throw a fetus in a dumpster. Now we wake up and we're in the Fourth Reich, and Planned Parenthood is uh, apparently selling baby body parts for a profit, and she's heard on tape joking about selling dead baby body parts and haggling over prices. And saying she wants to buy a Lamborghini. Just kidding. <laughs> so that's why I say that you know, each show of mine, I try to create what's considered to be a theme. Today's theme is a simple theme. From drug, sex, and rock and roll to the Fourth Reich. Little simple theme. A simple thematic. Each day I start the show, I look at all the sound, I look at all the stories, and I say, what's combining it? From drug, sex, and rock and roll to the Fourth Reich. And you wake up and you can't believe how, how, how low it's going. The flags are lowered at half staff by Congress in the memory and in honor of the four servicemen killed by the Muslim fanatic last week in Tennessee. And Obama stubbornly refuses to lower the flag all morning. All morning. That stubborn man won't lower the flag because he don't like the crackers that were killed. Finally, in the afternoon, the flag is lowered. The, the sorority said, Mr. President, look, this is getting bad. We'll lose the entire 
You're going to lose the entire military vote on this. Ah, who cares? Listen, Hillary's got to take the reins after you're through. I mean, be practical. Lower the flag. Get out. So that must have gone on for six hours. Unless he was practicing some uh, golf stroke. I don't know where he was. And it's not a joke anyway. It's sickening. Then it gets even better. There's a White House conference today. A religious conference of some kind. Uh, a faith symposium. A faith symposium. Who do they invite? Al Sharpton. Now, Al Sharpton, as you well know, invented his reverence degree. I'll repeat it over and over again. I worked for many years to earn a PhD. That's why I'm called Dr. Savage. If you are a medical doctor, you work many years to earn your medical degree. If you are a lawyer, you work many years to become a doctor of jurisprudence. I take very seriously titles in our country that are so hard to earn. So when I see a nobody like this, a street radical, an agitator, a communist, a self-serving communist, simply using race as a weapon to profit so grandly up across the years... Now he's in and out of the White House a hundred times advising the president on how to agitate, how to agitate America, how to attack police, moving every day towards a federalized police force, which, by the way, the police should fight if they have to with everything in them. Do not let this gang federalize the police force or we will be living in Mexico where the federales rule the people. Rule the people in a terrorist state. If you want to see a federal police force instead of local police, I warn you, you will be living in a third world despotism like you can never imagine if you let these people take over the control of the police forces in this country. What else would Sharpton be doing in that White House a hundred times? Scheming! 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 With his buddy, Obama. They agree, obviously. Who has a man in the White House a hundred times unless you agree with him? Unless you need him well, what would Obama need Sharpton for? Think about it. Could you get into the White House? Do you think Trump could visit the White House to discuss an opposition political belief with this uh, gang? No. Could any talk show host that you believe in on radio ever get invited to the White House? No. But Al Sharpton, a man like this? And of all things that he talks about, I want you to listen to perhaps the dumbest man in the history of the world talking about climate, and the important point here is not how stupid he is. The important point is to understand that John Kerry is just as stupid in his dealings with Iran. Obama is just as stupid in his dealings with everything on the planet except his ability to crush domestic opposition because he is, at the end of the day, nothing more than a community organizer. He had no foreign policy experience when he came to office. He has no foreign policy experience to speak of now. He has given away the store. He has weakened America's sovereignty. He has diluted America's military. He has decapitated the American military, and he's only just begun. He's now going in for the kill. Listen to who he invites to the White House to talk about global warming. I want you to hear it, every last word. Play me it, Sam. and many of the champions that you will see today, it is an issue of justice and it is an issue of human rights. Uh, African Americans are at a higher risk of being uh, close or predisposed to areas of, of carbon uh, as well as other poisonous pollution in the air. And we have a disproportionate interest because we suffer disproportionately. So as we have fought and this administration has made history with health care, you cannot at the one, on the one hand say that we want everyone to have great health care, but not everyone have great health. And you cannot not deal with climate change as a health issue, as a moral issue, and as a civil rights issue. So he's trying to agitate the black communities across America into believing that they're affected by so-called global warming. Now, the only pollution that I can think of that is more toxic to the African-American community than what he discussed is the, uh, is the, are the noxious fumes coming out of his yap. The noxious fumes that came out of his yap are far more deadly to the African-American community uh, than all the carbon dioxide in the world, so far as I could tell. He calls carbon a poison and other pollutants. He doesn't know what he's talking about. If you taught the fifth grade, you would have to send this child to a school for the mentally deficient. So, carbon is a poison? 
You morons, the building block of all organic matter, idiot. I guess you didn't learn that in the gutters of uh, New York City. I, I don't understand how they can get away with it. I don't understand. I do understand how they get away with it. It's because of ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, and half of Fox News. That's how they get away with it. It's that simple. Well, that's the beginning of this hour. Welcome to the program. And uh, we have so much more for you today. So much more. There will be a lot more sound and, and uh, important news stories. We have uh, the fact that Obama refused to lower the flag in honor of the veterans who were slaughtered last week in Tennessee by the Muslim jihadist in our midst, myth, missed, by the way, by Jay Johnson of DHS, missed by the FBI, missed by the CIA under Brennan. How is that possible that with all these billions and billions of dollars, FBI, CIA, DHS, Defense Intelligence Agency, how could they miss another jihadi? What are they focusing on? I'll let you figure it out. I'll let you figure out what they're focused on as opposed to the terrorists amongst us. There'll be many more attacks. You know, but there's a rule of nature I have to tell you about. I told you that God's hand is involved in all of this. See, I couldn't live with any of this. I would have quit radio. If I felt when I was going through a really bad period a few months ago, maybe a few weeks ago, I was finishing a book. I had gotten over a flu. It was the end of a long year, you know, coming into summer. The flu wiped me out for two months, That um, uh, um, the flu from Honduras. The Honduran flu that I got almost wiped me out. My body just really got wa wasted by the Honduran flu brought in by Obama's children last summer on those trains. Oh, yeah, call it the Honduran flu. It's not the Asian flu. I haven't had a flu in 25 years. I don't get sick. I have minor complaints. I got wiped by it because I wasn't ready for it. And thank God I used all of the alternative medical tricks that I've learned over the last 40 or 50 years. I used to write books on nutrition, homeopathy, herbal medicine. I swear in a stack of Bibles... That in addition to, in addition to Western medicine, meaning the antibiotic that took on the strep throat, I was still not better. I was wiped out. I was weakened and I used all of these other modalities to get myself back on my feet. Anyway, I was really weak. I was really weak and I was just, the news was killing me. I didn't think I could take much more of it. It was so negative. And I didn't have the strength to carry the world on my shoulders as you have to do every day in talk radio, whether it's myself or others. It's like Atlas Shrugged. I mean, we are in a way mini atlases here. We carry the world on our shoulders every day. It's very hard to sort all the news, all the sound, and come up with a cogent statement every day for three straight hours. Try it someday. See how easy it is. And then something happened. And that something was my, my again, I don't want to go on, but you say you're wrapping yourself, up, whatever. I had a revisit with God. Remember, I had that thing about the three rabbis who came down, the, the mystical rabbis, and we had that very short conference in a hidden location. I played a tape of it on this show. Well, they helped me reconnect to that power, and that power is now surging through me again on a minor scale. I could just imagine what it's like to really tap into it, whether you're a Sioux Indian or a Christian or a Jew or another religion that knows how to reach the powers of God. I can't imagine what it's like to have 100% of that flowing through a being. I know there are people who have it, though. I've seen them bend nails. I've seen them sleep on beds of iron. I've seen them survive Auschwitz. I have seen those miracles. Because a religious man told me 40 years ago when I was wandering in the desert, and I didn't know which way to turn, he said, if you get the faith of God, you can move mountains. I didn't quite understand what he meant. I am moving mountains on this show every day. Do you know that? Do you realize that this is like moving a mountain every day? To have you, the audience, listen to me and care what I have to say, and even if you analyze it to say I disagree with them, you are the mountain that I have to move every day, one way or the other. I, Michael Savage, have to move a mountain every day. Maybe many mountains. You are the mountain. And so I use many different methods to move the mountain, to shake the mountain, to make the mountain tremble. So the mountain trembles in its, in its guts, when it realizes what's being done to it, what it's being done to it by the enemy within. That the enemy within would be so low as to invite a street rat like Al Sharpton into the White House a hundred times and then, then insult America by having him talk about a subject upon which he can have zero knowledge. 
and then mumble about African American disproportionate and pollution and carbon and we're suffering and this and that, the civil rights issue. It's insanity. This is a few days after the insane John Kerry. By the way, John Kerry's not two steps above Al Sharpton. Just a better delivery. What, 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 what John Kerry has to say about his deal for, the, for giving a nuclear weapon to Iran is about as knowledgeable as Al Ayatollah Sharpton is talking about the, uh, this global warming business. Do you have any idea how serious this business is of giving away the store to Iran? Do you know how Obama is a liar from the tip of his big toe to the top of his head? What a liar this man is and what he's doing for the new world order. How he is instituting on a daily basis a move towards the end of America and wrapping us in, into a bunch of serfs controlled by a new world order. What exactly can Iran hide in 24 days, Al Sharpton? What can I hide in 24 days on this nuclear agreement signed by John Kerry, Mr. Obama? I will read to you in a moment when I come back what Iran can hide in 24 days. And then your hair will stand up to realize that Obama is the biggest liar in history. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. So Obama's lying through his teeth about the deal with Iran, as is Kerry. The woman who negotiated the deal is a lifetime left-wing fanatic anti-American. And I pointed her out last week. She's the hidden voice. She's the one who negotiated many, many other anti-American treaties. She's never seen, but she did it. So they're lying to you and saying that if Iran violates the agreement, the sanctions kick back in place. So they gave Iran, listen to this, 24 days notice now. Obama the liar, in this secret deal with Iran, with the mullahs, they're going to get 24 days notice when the inspectors are coming. No American inspectors are, uh, inspectors are allowed in, in Iran. That's number two. The nuclear agreement signed by the liars allows Iran to deny inspectors access to suspect sites for up to 24 days. So you ask yourself, well, really, what can Iran hide in 24 days? Kerry says nothing. Kerry says you can't hide anything. You can't hide a nuke. Well, here they are. Most weaponization activity centrifuge manufacturing, centrifuge components, uranium stockpiles, missile components, incriminating documentation, computers, hard drives. What else can Iran hide in 24 days, Mr. Obama? Computer modeling to simulate nuclear explosive devices. Mr. Obama, they can also hide experiments with explosive lenses. Uh, they can hide work on firing systems all in 24 days. And they tell us that there's nothing. Well, listen to C Kerry now in the following two clips, and you realize that John Kerry is just Al Sharpton with a better suit. And if the Congress kills this deal, there will be no restraints, none whatsoever, no inspections, it's over, and the sanctions will disappear because our colleagues who we negotiated with will say, well, look, the United States Congress killed this. We didn't, but now everybody's free to do what they want. I'm telling you, the U.S. will have lost all credibility and if we then decided to use military, do you believe the United Nations will be with us? Do you think our European colleagues will support us? Not on your life. They'll say you guys just walked away from something we spent four years negotiating with you. You, you traitor, you. You traitor as yellow rat. You went around Congress to try and try this ploy and then say now you got to support it? A traitor. In another day, the man would be arrested for espionage for what he did. But... We don't live in that other day, do we? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Rip oh, Pat Benatar. I don't have the dictionary translation with me. Turn it. I, I can't understand it. My audience can't follow that music. It's from another era. They can't, they can't listen to me. And, uh... So we talked about uh, Obama's uh, relationship to Planned Parenthood. We've talked about the new undercover video clearly showing in plain plain sight Planned Parenthood executive director ha haggling over the price of aborted baby parts and saying she wants to buy a Lamborghini. Video released today shows Dr. Mary Gatter, 
president of Planned Parenthood's medical director's council, saying she doesn't want to lowball the price of an aborted fetal part. Then we have John Kerry, who is frighteningly practicing sedition here. In going around the United States of America's Congress and selling it to the U.N. first, then getting the U.N. to, to agree with giving Iran the bomb, then he comes back and says, oh, if a Congress kills this deal, oh, then we're screwed because then the U.N. won't be with us. Hey, you see, because they supported it and they won't be with us in a military option. They never would have anyway, John. You know that. The same day that they open a, uh, an, an embassy with Cuba, without releasing one prisoner from the political prisons in Cuba, this despicable administration opens relations with the Castro brothers. Who are, There's two gangsters running the island of Cuba. It's a criminal organization. The people live in a criminal organization in Cuba, and the, this government does a deal with them, opens an embassy, lets them open an embassy here, doesn't have one political prisoner released. Same with Iran. They give Iran the bomb and they don't get one hostage released. What does that tell you about this guy running the country? Well, he has Al Sharpton in and out of the White House a hundred times. Graduated from high school in New York, Tilden High School. Oh, he went as far as high school. Dropped out of Brooklyn College because he found out that street agitation pays better than a, than a degree. Look how far he's come. I mean, you know, you could say I'm jealous. I mean, you could say I'm just jealous of Al Sharpton. After all, I killed myself with such all these educations and two master's degrees, a PhD, and uh, 21 years in radio. And look at that, I haven't been invited to the White House once. Many of you consider me a national treasure. But no, it's Al Sharpton who's the actual national treasure. Just um, Google Freddy's Fashion Mart, and you'll see what a national treasure he is. Freddy's Fashion Mart. You might even find some ripe footage of him, the White House visitor, with a megaphone screaming, burn her down. There's more words than that. I can't repeat them on a national show. That's his own in and out of the White House. Now, I'll say it again so you finally get this through your stupid heads, you leftists. If a conservative had won the White House, and I don't mean Romney, a real conservative, let's say a real conservative had won the White House, but he was like a moderate conservative, the type you like. And then one day you wake up and find out that the uh, Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan had been secretly going in and out of the White House over 100 times. What would you say? Oh, my God. Why, that president, that conservative president had the head of the Ku Klux Klan in the White House a hundred times. That's the optic chiasmical equivalent, in my estimation, of Al Sharpton going in and out of Obama's White House. Now, I know those are two big words. For those of you who think carbon is a poison and carbon is a pollution, I understand that optic chiasmical is, is, is too difficult. It's not been used in the media. It's not like the word gravitas. But there's actually an optic chiasma in the brain that, you know, when you see an image, right? You know, you're not actually seeing the image. You're seeing it upside down in reverse. It's, if you actually focused on this, you could probably go crazy. I can make a lot of people frightened right now. I think I'll stop. It's amazing how God designed our brains or, or how we evolved. Okay, we didn't, there's no God. For those of you who are just intimidated by the word God, you're frightened of it because you know you'll be judged. <laughs> Don't worry, baby. We'll all be judged. <laughs> Me too. We'll all be judged and we're all sinners. Don't worry about it. None of us gets out of this alive and all of us are punished. But nevertheless, the optic chiasma as designed by nature, God, Gaia, whatever you believe in, evolution, is such that what you actually see is upside down and backwards. And there's a little piece of tissue <laughs> in the prefrontal lobe of your brain called the optic chiasma. And it takes the image that you're seeing and it writes it for you to view it on your screen called your mind. This is how incredible we are. You understand how great we are? You know why I became a biologist originally? I would sit in the classroom and I would trace. I was so bored of school. I hated it. I, I had all sorts of illnesses probably. Mainly was, the illness of intelligence was the worst of all the illnesses I suffered. The illness of creativity is another illness I suffered from. The illness of not being able to sit still for too long, another illness I suffered from. So while they were lecturing me on this and that, I, I would sit with a pen and I would trace the outline of my fingers and palm on a piece of paper over and over again. Then I'd flip my palm over and, you know, my father had a little antique store and he had a jeweler's eye thing that you put in your eye like a magnifying glass. Well, he gave it to me to look. I used to love to look at rings and stuff with it. It was a little magnifying. I would look at the lines in my hand or I would blow up the, my fingernail to look at it. 
And I would wonder at the creation that created my palm, the lines in my hand, my nail. Now today, of course, they would have had me probably treated for a medical illness. Child cannot sit too long, uh, was caught with a device staring at his hand. Uh, then they would have taken me some quack with a medical degree. It would have said he has ADD, ADHD, probably 15 illnesses. And they would have taken me out because of my creativity and curiosity, another illness I suffered from. Curiosity is an illness, you know, to those who hate boys. All of the, all of the syndromes that I just described to you are those used to, to destroy the males of our population by the you-know-who. You know who's doing it. It's the same ladies who run Planned Parenthood. And if you look at the faces, they look like the oven stuffers from the 1930s in uh, Poland and Hungary. To me, that's just my, uh, it's my projection. My projection. I look at their faces, I see the oven stuffers from the 30s. To use a vulgarity, a grotesque vulgarity to describe the death of millions of human beings at the hands of monsters. So you see it all comes around. Now, so Wesley Clark says there should be internment camps for uh, disloyal Americans. And he hints it, almost says the word, but doesn't say uh, Islamic. Uh, never says that, never defines it. Now, what if Donald Trump had said what Wesley Clark said Friday that I played for you? What if Donald Trump had said that instead of uh, McCain wasn't, maybe he is a war hero? Oh, well, what would Wolfie do then? What would all the brave boys and girls jumping on Trump do then? Wesley Clark, a Rhodes Fellow, by the way. Oh, yeah, Bill Clinton, a Rhodes Fellow. What's a Rhodes Scholar? What's Rhodes, Rhodes? Row, row, rows, your bow. Rhodes, Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S. Why? Oh, yeah, name for that fellow Rhodes, Rhodes. Yeah, Rhodes, the roads all lead to Rome. That's right, all, the, all roads lead to Rome. You remember that phrase, all roads lead to Rome? You know where that came from? Well, it implied something in the ancient days, old days of when Rome ruled the world or you ruled that continent. All roads led to Rome because they built all the roads and all the roads went from Rome to everywhere else so they could run their armies down on chariots. So that's where the phrase all roads lead to Rome come from. And of course it has relevance here in America today, but I won't go into it since I cannot swim with cement on my feet. The phone number is 855-472-82. I love words. Words are powerful. They're weak. They mean nothing. And remember that Shakespeare had a king and a fool in all of his, in many of his plays. And I be your king and I be your fool at the same moment. I be your king and I be your fool at the same moment. And I am not a reliable source, as you well know. Reliable sources are people like Dan Rather and his descendants in, at ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox News and MSNBC. Those are your reliable sources. Not a, we in talk radio, we're mere, we're mere entertainers, we're shock jocks. When they interviewed me many years ago, they called me a shock jock in England when they banned me. If I was just a shock jock, why'd they ban me from England? I guess they're afraid of my shock jock wordings. In other words, if I were just a shock jock, as they said in England, when they banned me from entering that fine country of people, how could they be afraid of a shock jock who just plays records and talks? Well, I guess words have meaning and words have powers. I guess they didn't like what I said about what would happen if uh, a Muslim nation got a nuclear weapon and they were our enemy. I guess that was a shock to the Labor Party at that time. Okay, enough of this. What else do we have for you in the kitty to play for you? Oh, oh yes. All of you who believe Al Sharpton's now an expert on climate science, and the only thing he knows about carbon would be this, maybe the seltzer he drank from a Jewish friend in Brooklyn. I think that's the closest this man came to understanding the effects of carbon. And it probably produced a bilious gas in his body that's not left his uh, cells to this day. And it comes out in this foul verbiage of his every day. Al, are you listening? Al, have I offended you yet, Ayatollah, Ayatollah Al? Arctic ice grew by a third after a cool summer in 2013. Al Sharpton, pay attention. The volume of Arctic sea ice increased by around a third <laughs> after an unusually cool summer in 2013. Researchers say the growth in, uh, continued in 2014 and more than compensated for losses recorded in the three previous years, Ayatollah. The scientists involved believe changes in summer temperatures have greater impacts on ice than thought. But they say 2013 was, uh, you get the picture. That didn't make it to the White House. But imagine, just imagine, 
imagine that I take some calls right now. I want to take some calls. I could use four more hours of radio. I am not ready for the day after the. I'm still warming up. I don't want to face life after radio. There is no life after radio. Do you realize how wonderful radio is? I got to take 30 seconds to do a, an ode to radio. I got to do it. I don't do it often enough, never. I said in the beginning, when I first started radio, quite by chance, by the way, in the year of our Lord, 1994, Anno Domini. Anno Domini, I'll take one with sausage and cheese, please. Say, Anno Domini, I think you're talking about pizza. Okay, but that's the society I live in. That's the, that's the level of education. Anno Domini means, yeah, okay, pizza with so. So the point is that in the year 1994, I started by accident. I had several other careers before this. And I loved it so much, despite all of the local liberals who try to trip me up every day that I was on the radio in KSFO in 94. Every day there would be an incident of a liberal from KGO or somewhere else whispering stories about me trying to get me thrown off the air. And then there were rumors that I would never make it in radio because my voice was too New York. <laughs> Can you imagine? My accent was too New York. Little did they know. There was a local Schmendrick here who wore a Hawaiian shirt for the last 500 years. The same Hawaiian shirt he started at at a radio station. He's, he's sick now. I can't pick on him. But he thought it was good luck to wear a Hawaiian shirt that stank. I don't think he ever washed it. They tried him out in L.A. They gave him two markets. I said he'd flop. I said he's too weak. I gave him a nickname. It stuck, and they threw him off the air in L.A. But the thing is, with my two New York accent, I'm now on many, many stations, hundreds, millions of listeners, 21 years. Thank God. Thank God. But why am I telling you this? Because I want to say one other thing about radio. Radio gave me a high that I never had before, so I went to a, a program director. I, I don't know if it was him. Someone said that radio is the greatest natural high there is. If you are on the air and you're doing your job right and you are rolling and you can feel it, and you can feel the, the, the music running through your veins, out through the microphone, into the ears, hearts and minds of the listeners, you'll feel an experience like, I said, I know it, that's what I'm trying to say to you. And so I've said to you in many interviews, I've said this, that the three hours that I am on the radio are the best part of my day. You say, well, that's sad. Okay, it's sad for you. It's not sad for me. For three hours, to use a phrase from the old group, I think the Eagles, right? No, Fly Like an Eagle, who was that? Who, who did Fly Like an Eagle? Whatever. Yeah, Steve Millerby. And I had a friend years ago. I wonder where he is today, Steve. He was in that group. He was a nice guy, guitarist. And gold records on the wall, platinum records, nice dog. Anyway, I used to say to him, though, I didn't know him after I was in radio. I saw him move to some. But the thing was, is I would say that for three hours, I fly like an eagle. I soar. I, I have wings. I take wing. And then for 21 hours, I crawl like a, well, like everyone else. I'm just protoplasm with a heart and mind struggling to get through, man. <laughs> and the object of just trying to get through is to not commit too much damage along the way. That's the object. In other words, it's so hard, life is so hard, you're bound to screw up, hurt everyone around you without trying. No matter who you are, you are gonna hurt everyone around you at some point in your life without even trying. That's where the word apology comes in. That, that's where it came in. That's in the, in the vernacular, I apologize. It does have meaning. But they want Trump to apologize for something he almost said, didn't say, while Kerry calls for internment camps and they don't ask for an apology? No, no, there's no bias in the media. So for 21 hours a day, my friends, I, like you, feel the pain. <laughs> and for three hours a day, I fly like an eagle and I take wing and I shall return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Fleetwood Mac, who knew they were this good? I was too young to understand how good they were. I was only 40 at the time. It's taken me all these extra decades to actually appreciate rock and roll that I hated. I remember I would come home and I, I would listen to my teenage son listening to groups that I, I break the, the, the CDs. I throw them in the garbage. And then some he left in the joy, grew up, moved on, and I, I started listening to them. Now I play them on the show. <laughs> I swear some of my bumper music came from the dresser, stuff he left behind. I mean, he was ahead of, you know, it's like, it's another world. Do we have the other Fleetwood Mac before we go leave my poor audience that wants another hour of me. How about go your own way? Love you know, they say in television, 
I was on television once for three months. I was told to make love to the camera. I never could kind of fathom what that meant. But it's the same with radio. You really do have to love your audience to do well at this. Join the savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I missed that song when it came out. I was busy working for my doctorate. I guess I have more leisure now. And so I can understand music more because I have more time to do nothing. So I can listen to these lyrics and think that they mean something. Welcome back to the... <laughs> I don't mean them. I was saying rock and roll. I think pool cues and... Uh, used to laugh at the guy who played guitar in the garage, right? Look, look where they are today compared to you. You're struggling, and he made a fortune. We had a friend like that when I was a kid. 13 years old, he broke through in rock and roll, I swear to God. I, can name his, I can't mention his name. He had one hit, and I forget the name of it, and uh, it was so big. We were so envious of him. 13 years old, he had long hair. He went on a tour to Japan. He was dating women 20. He was 13. No, I mean, Today, we consider, I think, rape and molestation. 13 years old, looked like, it was one of those kids 13 who looked like a man. There was always guys like that. They had like hairy arms, they grew a beard. I don't know how that worked. Remember when you were a kid, it was very hard to like be a man at 12, 13. You couldn't wait to be a man. Your voice was still very high. And you sounded like you were in radio, but eventually you became a man and sounded like Savage. But those were hard times to go from 13 to 14, you know, with that. So this kid was like, and he went, I don't forget. But years later, as the clock turns, as world to world turns, calendar moves on. He had this early success. And then he just was forgotten, fell off the edge of the earth. He became a postman in Woodstock, New York. And I saw him years later in a, in a postal uniform with a sack on his back. It wasn't bad. He probably has a nice pension today, given that the federal government gives out nice, such nice pensions. I'm not knocking it. My uncle was a postman. Well, what's wrong with it? Someone has to deliver the mail. I'm not knocking it. People live in the mail. A truck pollutes. They didn't make the truck. The most polluting vehicles on the planet are postal trucks. If you got stuck behind one on a country road, you could die. It's like a floating gas chamber. I never saw anything like it. One lane and you're behind a U.S. postal truck. I mean, if they're so interested in carbon, they ought to have Al shopped and redesigned postal trucks. So they don't pollute the way they do. But nevertheless, here we are. It's the third hour of the Savage Nation. I'm still going strong. We're talking about everything from, well, I can't review that's a good thing to do, review. I can't. If you came in late, it's your problem. You'll have to catch up. You'll have to get the uh, Savage Cliff Notes. <laughs> what you missed? I'm not going to give you the Cliff Notes. But today was a real low point for the Obama administration. They didn't actually get caught because no one will report on it. Congress lowered the flag at half-staff in memory and in honor of the four Uniformed personnel are slaughtered by the Muslim terrorists last week in Chattanooga, and Obama refused to do it. He was just stiff-necked. No, I'm not lowering it. No matter what anyone said, the sorority was, they're probably screaming over this. Josh Ernst, the Goebbels of our time, in my opinion, covered up for the president. Oh, yeah, he'll get around to it later. There was an early, I swear to God, the guy said, yeah, you'll hear more about it later, blah, blah, blah. ISIS-linked Twitter account mentioned the Chattanooga minutes before shooting. You missed that last week? An ISIS-linked Twitter account mentioned something about to happen in Chattanooga, Tennessee, about 15 minutes before the first shooting that left four Marines dead and one sailor dead, Fox News reported. According to multiple news sites, the tweet read, Oh, American dog, soon you will see wonders, and included a hashtag, which I'm not going to read. Moments later, the shooter killed four Marines and then a sailor. The shooter, who was killed by police, thank God, may he rot in hell, has been identified as, can I read his name or is that considered racism? It's very embarrassing because his name is Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz. They say originally from Kuwait, but he was not Kuwait, he was Palestinian. They also left that out of the report. B 
because that would make you think, wait a minute, Palestinian, Palestine violence. Gee, that hasn't been in the news for a while. Can't report that. Doesn't mean all Palestinians are committing violence, but he wasn't from Kuwait. That's all. All right, here we are. Here's an email from a friend, Michael Savage. You're taking me back to the late 60s and the early 70s when I was a teenager. He said, I wasn't very well behaved, but hearing you in the music today took me way back, far, far back. And he said, Savage, today was the perfect day to go there because my 93-year-old pal who was a bathroom attendant all his life just passed away. You see, he worked every day of his life since he was 11, right up until he got sick a couple of weeks ago. Michael, he had pride in his work. His bathrooms were always spotless. I would love to talk with him when we went out to dinner, and sometimes I get in trouble with my wife and guests waiting back at the table. I'd be in the bathroom talking to the bathroom attendant. He was a wonderful example of a man who lived through the worst of Jim Crow, who never complained and always bragged about this country and its greatness. So, Ma Michael, it's been a melancholy day, and then you came on with the music and your delivery. It couldn't be any more perfect. You truly know your audience, and he shall remain anonymous. See? You touch people. And here we are. What would you like to talk about uh, since we're on the airwaves crackling with life? as your bright antennae bristle with the energy of Michael Savage. And I move you in ways you couldn't believe you'd be moved by an invisible force. I still say a radio is an amazing medium, probably the most powerful medium there is, because we have nothing. I don't have legs and lipstick and hair that I can swish around on Fox News and shift in the seat. Now, you could say I'm jealous. I mean, okay, I'm jealous, but I'm not a, I don't have those attributes to begin with, number one. If I were Caitlyn Jenner, okay, another story. But I don't have that. And then we have Obama on the Iran deal lying through his teeth like kingdom come. Okay, we may as well make your day. We got to play the, the big guy. The big guy now, the big deep voice is so great. Clip number six, your man, your president, Barack Obama, on the Iran deal in six. This is uh, by far uh, our strongest approach to ensuring that Iran does not get a nuclear weapon. Uh, there's broad international consensus around this issue. Oh, yeah. Not just uh, among no, no. Uh, the international community, but also oh. among uh, oh. experts in nuclear All the science is in. All the science is in. My working assumption is, is that Congress will uh, pay attention uh, to that broad-based consensus. Well, all the science is in on this, and, and therefore anyone who disagrees is a, den a denier. It's like climate. Anyone who has any science that denies uh, what's going on is a denier. They should be excommunicated. The same with the deal with Iran. Anyone uh, who doesn't agree with his experts, he got six uh, uh, shills from, from the expert field. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gave him jobs in the energy department, gave him big grants. So what can Iran hide in 24 days? Most weaponization activity, centrifuge manufacturing, uranium stockpiles, missile components computer modeling to simulate nuclear explosive devices, work on firing systems, experiments with explosive lenses. That's what Iran can hire in 24, hide in 24 days. And Obama has given Iran 24 days to get ready for the inspector. Could you imagine, like saying to a cocaine smuggler, you tell the DEA, look, here are the new rules for the DEA. You know that there's all sorts of contraband coming across the border, but under Obama, we can't break into that warehouse in Phoenix or on the border anymore because it's not fair to the drug dealer. So we're going to give drug dealers 24 days notice as to when we're going to visit the, uh, the uh, warehouse <laughs> to look for the illicit drugs. And by the way, there'll be no U.S. Border Patrol or DEA agents permitted in those, uh, inspection, on those inspections because it would be racist. So we're only going to use Mexicans to inspect the, uh, the facility. <laughs> That's what Obama's selling you. And he has Al Sharpton speaking on global warming. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. I'm not creating this. I'm not creating. It's impossible to believe that we could have fallen to this level of dumbness. Dumbness. Dumbest nation in the history of the world. I used to watch the news when I was a kid, and I would laugh at South Americans in Uruguay because they were such big soccer fans. I knew they were corrupt banana republics. I figure the people are stupid. They don't even know what's going on. I wake up. I'm living in Uruguay. And the Fourth Reich is operating now with the abortion mills and the sale of body parts. I was going to go to a soundbite. Now, I don't want to play Al Sharpton again. I can't do it. That will give me a migraine tonight. I won't be able to sleep. 
I don't know what I want to do right now. It's like the third hour I change gears. I took books out of my library. here. How about if I read Maximum Immunity, a Norwegian? I have the Norwegian edition. <laughs> or I could read In the Honor Medicines, my, Earth, my book Earth Medicine published in 1972 in German. That, that's been nice. I found the German edition of, of Earth Medicine. The French robbed me, of course, being French. The book was in many languages, Earth Medicine, except one language. They just robbed the book. They took the title in the entire book and robbed me. I tried to sue them in international court. I couldn't get a dime. Sort of like what I'm doing now with the victory in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Five years and a million dollars later. You want to hear the justice system? Yes, I won. Now find the money. That's all. That, that's the justice system in America. Wonder why the Godfather was so popular. <laughs> no, why do you think the Godfather? Because we know what the justice system is. Even when you win, you win nothing. That's where Don Corleone came in in the movies. That's why everyone liked it. Helmkraut. Die Cherokee Frauen tranken. Be as belieben der Menstruation einen Affuch. As diesem in America hemmischen Kraut. Und sie as Slushen. I can't do German. Dr. Millspur wist darauf rein. That's the German edition. I swear to you, it's interesting. Berberitz, die Penobscot in Maine, behandelten Geschirr im Mund. <laughs> no, German isn't an angry language. It is. It was just made angry by comedians that didn't know how beautiful the language was. German is a beautiful language. It was some of the finest literature in the history of the world before Adolf's boys took over. The most advanced civilization in Europe. Look, look where that led to. Did you ever figure that one out? I've read so many essays on it. Whole books on it. how could the most advanced European civilization of its time have invented the concentration camp and tortured people to death? Well, now let's jump cut. How could the most advanced society on earth have devolved to such a point that they're bartering over baby body parts? Ring the bell on that one. Now she says she wants to buy a Lamborghini. That, that's on the, every website now. Drudge had it this morning from uh, Breitbart. I have it on Michael Savage. You know, it's sad to watch because you look at the faces of those Planned Parenthood women, and there they are. There they are. There's the Third Reich again, in my opinion. Only it's acted out now in the Fourth Reich. But this is a tough topic. People don't want to hear it. That, that's an embarrassing tough topic. It's very hard to do. They, they, just like, they don't want to hear about it. Like baby body parts, ugh, turn it off. I don't like it, don't know it, they should be arrested, but don't tell me about it. It's not for radio. Let's not do that again. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. Trump, yes, that you could play. Bashing Trump, that's allowable. Uh, Kerry lying about Iran, give him a bomb, we don't play that. Dead liar. No, that didn't make it to ABC. But the Trump, 5,000 minutes a day. Oh, Trump said this about McCain. Mr. McCain, you're a war hero, right? Oh, yes, 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 but I'm not really a hero. It's those other men, and I'm just a humble old uh, uh, senator, and uh, that Mr. Trump. 10,000 times a day from all of the little the Lilliputians. Trump, 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 Trump. Trumping Trump, 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 Trump. Not one word about John Kerry's lies about the nuclear deal. No analysis. Not one minute statement about uh, Wesley Clark calling for internment camps. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Sure, I can believe it. Absolutely can believe it. But it is summer. And uh, in the summertime, we have a good time here on the Savage Nation. In fact, come August, you know, August are good shows for me. I'm not there yet. But in August, I go to the uh, uh, end of August, the Hotel Ozone, which was a 60s underground movie that I loved. But it becomes that tempo for me. Are you listening to me? Are you still listening or you tuned out already? Don't tell me. Don't you dare tell me. Don't you tell me you jumped over to Wallbanger. Don't you dare tell me you're going to listen to the, that Connie Barker, please. Because the only thing he knows about is slums and how to manage them. That's it. If you want to know about apartments and drywall, that's it. The same story every day. Demo well, them, Demo them Republicans, Democrats. I'm not supposed to bash anyone on radio. I get it. No, I'm not doing it. Just not in the mood to do any more news. I don't know what I want to do. I'm just thinking about it. I, I know what I'm going to do. I am going to come back the minute I come back, and I'm, I'm either going to read... The Doors of Perception by Aldous Huxley or something else. I'll be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, not long He's the Neville Chamberlain of our time who believes that over the next 15 years, Iran is going to change their behavior because this deal doesn't require them to do a damn thing in terms of changing their behavior. At the right, passage right at there. the end of 15... That's Lindsey Graham. Okay, stop. That's Lindsey Graham, the open borders guy. Open borders are us. Comparing Obama to Neville Chamberlain. I guess I've been listening to the Savage Nation down there in the Carolinas. I've been saying it for quite a while. I mean, I'm not the only one. It's obvious. But actually, Obama's not Neville Chamberlain. That's a bad analogy. Neville Chamberlain loved his country, and Neville Chamberlain actually thought he was going to uh, stop war by working with Germany. And, of course, immediately after signing the naval pact with Germany, uh, Germany invaded the country. And immediately after giving the pact to Iran, it's history repeating itself. The day after Obama sold America out to Iran, they said death to America. The very next day, it shocked even Ketchup. Ketchup Kerry was shocked. Just shocked. A day later, they got the deal. They said, drop dead America. We're still going to bury you. day later, it's like invading Czechoslovakia. Listen to clip four. Here's John Ketchup Kerry, shocked that Iran says death to America the day after they got everything they wanted. Listen. I, I don't know how to interpret it uh, at this point in time, except to take it at face value that that's his policy. Oh. But I do know that often comments are made publicly and things can evolve that are different. Oh, sure. It's like Hitler saying, oh, yeah, after I get the, you give me the deal, Schmendrick from England, I'll invade Czechoslovakia. So then they invade Czechoslovakia. Kerry saying, well, I don't know. Take it at face value. But things can change. He won't invade Poland. I mean, he won't invade Poland. He won't invade. No, no. That's that's as far as he's going to go. It's just the Sudetenland. So it used to be German anyway. It's just rescuing his own people. They don't really mean it. They don't want to conquer the world and kill Jews and everyone else. No. I mean, Hitler could change. Give him 15 years. It's only 1939. Figure by 1954, he'll be a different man. That's the same mentality. So, no, he's not Neville Chamberlain. Not what we know. Well, those who don't know their history are condemned to repeat it. John, did you read that? In the... I'm out of time already. I got a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. The people are so darn talented, but their message is so warped that it will lead to the sale of baby body parts and people are indifferent. So meanwhile, Al Sharpton sneaks in and out of the White House. Meanwhile, Obama puts down Christianity and lifts up Islam. Meanwhile, there are murder after murder by Muslims and Obama does nothing to stop the slaughter. Meanwhile, he does a deal with Iran bypassing Congress. Keep playing the rock and roll, though. That's the important thing. Just keep on playing the rock and roll that Hollywood just loves. Just keep the people dumb, that's all. Keep it dumb so Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and all of the other good Catholics by youth can do nothing to save America. Why do I single out Robert De Niro and, and the other guy? Because they're such great actors and such strong men. They could do such good for America if only they weren't such egomaniacs who lived only for themselves. I mean, I put myself on the line every day. What do you think, I do this because I want to make enemies? Do you think I enjoy making enemies? Do you think I enjoy antagonizing the giant that hates the population that stands up to it? Do you think I like being the man who sticks my thumb in the eye of such powerful monsters? I don't. I don't enjoy it at all. But I feel we're fighting for our survival. And I feel that more of us exist than they know. And I feel that they fear us, desperately fear us, which is why the Fourth Reich is getting more desperate every day. Now, it's against federal law to sell fetal body parts. If we had a legitimate federal government, Planned Parenthood would be immediately indicted, the leadership. They'd be taken out in handcuffs and arrested, booked and indicted, and then face a trial. They would say they maintain that they, they only donate the specimens and they only charge for the expenses it incurs. That's the front way. You get it? In other words, they sell the body parts, but they say they're not selling the body parts. They say they donate the body parts, and the only charge for the expenses occurs. And Dr. Gatter, Mengele's descendant, says, quote, we don't want to be in a position of being accused of selling tissue and stuff like that, Dr. Gatter says in this video. On the other hand, there are costs associated with the use of our space, 
and all that kind of stuff, says Dr. Gatter, feminist. Now let's go back to the Fourth Reich analogy. My attempt was to have you understand the sorry state that we're in under the Fourth Reich of Obama. Did the Fourth Reich, the one we're in rather, does it copy the Third Reich in any way? Well, let's look at what Planned Parenthood is doing now, and let's look back upon the German evil of World War II. Such diabolical practices were perpetrated by German World War II Nazis upon all of their prisoner victims. Adults were not only slaughtered upon arriving at concentration camps, but they were enslaved and forced to perform uh, death, death labor. And they were worked to death, starved to death, murdered, tortured. Then when they died, their bodies and body parts, such as hair and fat, were harvested by the Germans. The teeth were yanked out to extract the gold. Some prisoner skin was said to have been utilized to make lampshades. The Nazi model was never let any part of a victim go to waste. Planned Parenthood is not too far from that. Their motto may as well be never let any part of a fetus go to waste. Do you understand how serious the topic is? Do you know that if, if, if Planned Parenthood is not stopped in your lifetime, they will be exterminating the handicapped children who are born? In your lifetime, they will probably exterminate Down syndrome children? You have no idea that everything begins small, begins very small. The Nazis began with one law. Do you know what that law was? The first law in Germany. I studied this in great detail. You want to hear what the first little law was? You know, great oaks from little acorns grow. You know that one. You heard that adage when you were a child, right? Great oaks from little acorns grow. Well, Hitler had a little acorn, and his first acorn against the Jews was this. Jews not permitted to swim in Aryan swimming pools. Jews said, eh, heck with him, who wants to swim at them anyway. You know how that ended, don't you? If you think Planned Parenthood is in the health and education business, just remember the adage, great oaks from little acorns do really grow. I want to go back where I was. McCain's fellow POWs trashed Trump, saying we protected his ability to be a billionaire. Now, this is an important soundbite. By the way, I still support Trump. I'll vote for Trump. I like Donald Trump. I think McCain is a lout. But McCain is a hero. I said that yesterday. And so he made a little error. Big deal. A lot of people make little errors. Obama's made big errors. Has anyone called him on the carpet for it? No. But they won't stop going after Trump for one reason. He's the leader right now of the entire conservative movement in America, maybe the world. He's the leader of the Western world. You know that? You know that Donald Trump has moved up to being the leader of the whole Western world right now with his love for America, love for borders, language, culture, family, uh, military. He's the only one articulating those views. You understand that? But nevertheless, he has set off a little uh, shockwave here by, you know, saying things about McCain that people took uh, umbrage with. I like the word umbrage. Suddenly it's 1967. It's the age of the uh, Stingray. It's the age of Nam. It's the age of patchouli oil, no braziers, hairy underarms, STDs. It's the age of young men dying for the old man's war. It's the age of John McCain accidentally setting off a Zuni rocket on the deck of the aircraft carrier USS Forrestal, killing and injuring many, almost sinking the aircraft carrier. It was an accident. Hit the wrong button, that's all. Not his fault. He got sublunged in, in the jet. Got mixed up and hit the wrong button. A, a, a rocket went off. He almost sank the ship. Horrible situation. The ship almost went down. And, uh, you know, he did fly in Vietnam. He is a hero. He did get shot down. The Vietnamese tried to kill him in the pond. And one Vietnamese gentleman saved him, by the way. Oh, that's a secondary story that came out over the weekend. Was it not for this one Vietnamese villager who ran out and saved his skin? The others would have beaten him to death. And here's the, here's the terrible thing about that. Years later, he never acknowledged the guy who saved him, even though it was known who did it. He won a little medal for it. Yeah, you know, awful seeing the, the guy broke, died brokenhearted. That McCain, when he came to Vietnam during reconciliation talks, did not visit him, even though he saved his life. Can you believe that? All right, it's an oversight. I mean, it's very, it's common that people get saved every day of their life after being shot down in a fighter jet. It's a common occurrence, Robert, isn't it? it happens in everyone's life. It's not something you'd remember. It'd be like a bus driver who said hello. 
That's all. So McCain forgot it. Just another bus driver who saved him. So that's a side story. But he was a hero. He was tortured by those those little devils. They tortured him for five years. And McCain uh, comes from a distinguished military family. The father was Admiral McCain. You don't know this, but the grandfather was uh, a, a great admiral as well. Great admiral. He was the black sheep of the family, McCain. Last in his class at Annapolis. Again, he's still a war hero. He flew in combat and he got shot down. That's a war hero. He just was a, a, a lousy, horrible, double-talking, backstabbing senator. He opened up borders with Mexico. He undermined the Tea Party. Almost started a war with Russia. Almost overthrew the uh, legitimate government of Egypt to reinst reinstall the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, this guy's a nut. But McTrump is the issue now. They're saying he said this. He didn't say it. I almost said it. I could have said it. You thought I said it. I said it, but didn't. I modified it. Although I said it in the beginning of the sentence. At the end, I said he was a hero. The beginning, I said he was a schmendrick. At the end, I said he was a great man. I didn't say it. You said it. He said it. You didn't listen. You didn't run the whole thing. Part of the thing, you ran only the part of it. I was misquoted. He quoted. You quoted. You misinterpreted. I didn't say it. He did say it. He is a McCain. It's one of those things. That's not the issue. The issue is the double-talking thief. So Trump's uh, doing great because McCain's hated by conservatives. He's a phony, a warmonger, a double-talker, a liberal through and through, a two-face. And no matter what Trump said about him, people would rather have Trump than, than McCain, who's destroyed the entire, the entire southern border. So what, what's the big deal? Let's say Trump didn't say it. He did say it. He almost said it. He modified it. He didn't modify it. He almost modified it. If you listen to the whole thing, he didn't. He said he's a hero. He wasn't. He was. He is. He likes him. If they don't get shot, that's so what? He doesn't owe anyone an apology, especially that war horse. McCain should have retired 10 years ago and moved to Tibet to the Buick dealership I suggested he and his wife get. They should have bought a Buick dealership before it took off in, in Tibet or China. They love the Buick over there. So here we are. Donald Trump ignited a political furor. And now he has up in the polls anyone because everyone wants a real man. Everyone says a slip of the tongue. You don't kill him for that. What you do is you focus on Obama not ordering flags at half staff for the dead Marines last week. What you do is you focus on President, uh, the, President Obama, the Iranian fellow traveler, who, I mean, go down the litany. The litany, no, no, no flags at half staff, no letters to the families, no mention of a Muslim killer. You can't put three and four together and come up with seven, can you? No, you can't put two and two together. Instead, it's Trump, 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 Trump. I'm for Trump until I found it otherwise. If he goes third party, I'm not for Trump. Then he's a spoiler. He was on the show. He said he wouldn't do it. Then a week ago, he said he would. That's what worries him more than anything. Forget what he said. I like Donald Trump. I hope he sticks to his guns, and I hope he wins. That's what I hope. That's all. We'll see. We'll see. Something is wrong. The worse Obama gets... It's not that the better I feel, but I feel good because I don't care about him anymore. I've decided he's a traitor. I've decided that if we had a legitimate government, he would have been impeached literally five years ago for what he was doing, spying on us. Now they got the racial spies out there, deal with Iran, fast track to the nukes, fast track to citizenship. Since I know I'm powerless, I feel liberated. So I, uh, you understand what I'm saying? You get that there's a certain liberation in knowing your country's been taken over and infiltrated. Now all you do is lock and load. Since the government can't protect you, you better protect yourself. And by the way, all of you idiots out there, all of you morons out there, all of you slaves out there, listen carefully, very carefully, because what I'm about to say to you has never been said in the history of talk radio, ever, by anybody, so far as I know. But I may not have said that. Someone may have said it. You could have misinterpreted what I just said. Here's the thing. It's a simple fact. There's a difference between loving your country and loving your government. I despise my government and I love my country. Now put that in your hash pipe and smoke it. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Come a long way, baby. Just light up a big, long cigarette. That was the 60s. Remember that campaign? 
That was the campaign of uh, Madison Avenue Mad Men. You've come a long way, baby, so now you can light up a cigarette and give yourself lung cancer. Then you heard, it's our bodies, ourselves. So you want to throw a, a fetus into a dumpster in the middle of a club scene? Go ahead, throw a fetus in a dumpster. Now we wake up and we're in the Fourth Reich, and Planned Parenthood is uh, apparently selling baby body parts for a profit, and she's heard on tape joking about selling dead baby body parts and haggling over prices and saying she wants to buy a Lamborghini. Just kidding. <laughs> so that's why I say that you know, each show of mine, I try to create what's considered to be a theme. Today's theme's a simple theme. From drug, sex, and rock and roll to the Fourth Reich. Little simple theme. A simple thematic. Each day I start the show, I look at all the sound, I look at all the stories, and I say, what's combining it? From drug, sex, and rock and roll to the Fourth Reich. And you wake up and you can't believe how, how, how low it's going. The flags are lowered and half-staffed by Congress in the memory and in honor of the four servicemen killed by the Muslim fanatic last week in Tennessee. And Obama stubbornly refuses to lower the flag all morning. All morning. That stubborn man won't lower the flag because he don't like the crackers who were killed. Finally in the afternoon, the flag is lowered. The, the sorority said, Mr. President, look, this is getting bad. We'll lose the entire... You will lose the entire military vote on this. Ah, who cares? But listen, Hillary's got to take the reins after you're through. I mean, be practical. Lower the flag. Get out of So that must have gone on for six hours. Unless he was practicing some uh, golf stroke. I don't know where he was. And it's not a joke anyway. It's sickening. Then it gets even better. There's a White House conference today. Uh, a faith symposium. A faith symposium. Who do they invite? Al Sharpton. Now, Al Sharpton, as you well know, invented his reverence degree. I, I'll repeat it over and over again. I worked for many years to earn a PhD. That's why I'm called Dr. Savage. If you are a medical doctor, you work many years to earn your medical degree. If you are a lawyer, you work many years to become a doctor of jurisprudence. I take very seriously titles in our country that are so hard to earn. So when I see a nobody like this, a street radical, an agitator, a communist, a self-serving communist, simply using race as a weapon to profit so grandly up across the years. Now he's in and out of the White House a hundred times, advising the president on how to agitate, how to agitate America, how to attack police, moving every day towards a federalized police force, which, by the way, the police should fight if they have to with everything in them. Do not let this gang federalize the police force or we will be living in Mexico where the federales rule the people. Rule the people in a terror state. If you want to see a federal police force instead of local police, I warn you, you will be living in a third world despotism like you can never imagine if you let these people take over the control of the police forces in this country. What else would Sharpton be doing in that White House a hundred times? Scheming! 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 With his buddy, Obama. They agree, obviously. Who has a man in the White House a hundred times unless you agree with him? Unless you need him. Well, what would Obama need Sharpton for? Think about it. Could you to the White House? Do you think Trump could visit the White House to discuss an opposition political belief with this uh, gang? No. Could any talk show host that you believe in on radio ever get invited to the White House? No. But Al Sharpton, a man like this? And of all things that he talks about, the Dumbest man in the history of the world talking about climate. And the important point here is not how stupid he is. The important point is to understand that John Kerry is just as stupid in his dealings with Iran. Obama is just as stupid in his dealings with everything on the planet except his ability to crush domestic opposition because he is at the end of the day nothing more than a community organizer. He had no foreign policy experience when he came to office. He has no foreign policy experience to speak of now. He has given away the store. He has weakened America's sovereignty. He has diluted America's military. He has decapitated the American military and he's only just begun. He's now going in for the kill. If anyone visits the White House over a hundred times to talk to the president, you have to assume the president and he agree on policies and principles. It was Al Sharpton, after all, the street rat, who lobbied strongly for the appointment of our Attorney General, Loretta Lynch. That's right. It just shows you the crime does pay. Savage.